My name is Sister Bernadette. It's truly a pleasure to be able to provide the English texts and translations today. As you see, it's a wet day here in Rome. And we now join these brave people weathering the weather who are here in St. Peter's Square. Malgré, uh, la Their pluie eyes trained on the window we now see ahead of us with the papal coat of arms where Pope Francis will shortly appear. Our Holy Father celebrated Mass this morning in the Basilica. In thanksgiving for the 13 new cardinals he created in a consistory yesterday, 11 of whom are present here in Rome, two of them, the Cardinal Archbishop of Capiz in the Philippines, unable to come, as well as the Apostolic Vicar of Brunei, due to coronavirus travel restrictions here. The Holy Father now at the window greeting the people below. Marie, fratelli e sorelle, buongiorno. Frères et sœurs, bonjour. Dear brothers and sisters, good afternoon. Today, the first Sunday of Advent, a new liturgical year begins. In this season, the Church marks the passage of time with the celebration of the main events in the life of Jesus and the story of salvation. In so doing, as Mother, she illuminates the path of our existence, supports us in our daily occupations, and guides us towards the final encounter with Christ. Today's liturgy invites us to live the first important season, which is that of Advent, the first of the liturgical year, which prepares us for Christmas. This time of preparation is a time of expectation and hope. Expectation and hope. St. Paul indicates the object of our expectation. What is that? The manifestation of the Lord. The Apostle invites the Christians of Corinth and we ourselves to, to focus our attention on the encounter with Jesus. For a Christian, the most important thing is a continual encounter with Jesus, to be with the Lord. And thus, to to get used to being with the Lord, whom we will be with all, for all eternity. That definitive encounter will come at the end of the world, but it also comes every day, because with his grace, so that with his grace we can accomplish good in our own lives and in the lives of others. Our God is the God who comes. Let's not forget this. God is the God who comes. He's always coming. Our waiting will not be disappointed by him. The Lord never disappoints us. We may have to wait. He may allow us to go through a moment in darkness in order to make our wait, our hope grow, but he will never disappoint us. He will always come. He's always near us. At times we may not see him, but he always he's always coming. He came at a precise moment in history and became man to take our sins on himself. And the feast of Christmas in the Feast of Christmas, we remember that moment in history, and he will come at the end of time as universal judge. And he'll come a third time in a third way. He comes every day to visit his people, to visit every man and woman who receives him in the word, in the sacraments, in their brothers and sisters, Jesus. The Bible tells us he stands at the door and knocks every day. It's the door of our heart. He, he knocks at the door of our heart. Do you know how to listen to the Lord who knocks, who comes today? 
to visit you who knocks at your heart with, with a restlessness, with an idea, with an inspiration. He came at, at Bethlehem. He will come at the end of the at the end of time, but every day he comes to us. Be attentive. Be, be aware of what the Lord says to you when he knocks on the door of your heart. We are well aware that life is made of highs and lows, ups and downs, lights and darkness. Each one of us experiences moments of disappointment, of failure and being lost. Moreover, the situation we are living in, marked by the pandemic, generates worry, fear, and discouragement in many people. We run the risk of falling into pessimism, the risk of falling into a type of closure and apathy. How should we react in the face of all of this? The psalmist sugge the psalm suggests, our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Our heart is glad in him. That is a, a confidently waiting for the Lord allows us to find comfort and courage in the dark moments of our lives. And what gives rise to this courage and this trustful pledge? Where, does, where is it born? It's born of hope. And hope does not disappoint. That virtue that, that brings us forward, expecting to meet the Lord. Advent is a continuous call to hope. It reminds us that God is present in history to lead it to its ultimate end and to its fullness which is the Lord Jesus Christ. God is present in the history of humanity. He is the God with us. God is not far away. He's always with us. To the point that so often he knocks at the door of our heart. He walks beside us to support us. The Lord never abandons us. He accompanies us through the events of our lives to help us discover the meaning of the journey, the meaning of everyday life, to give us courage when we are under duress or when we suffer. In the midst of life's storms, God always extends his hand to us and frees us from threats. This is beautiful. In the book of Deuteronomy, there's a beautiful passage. And the prophet says to the people, think, what other people has its gods as close to them as you have me near to you, no one, only us. We're the only ones who have this grace of having God close to us, that God. We, we await God. We hope for his revelation. May Mary Most Holy, the woman of the expectation, accompany our steps at the beginning of this new liturgical year that we're beginning and help us to fulfill the task of Jesus' disciples indicated by the Apostle Peter. And what is that task? To render an account for the hope that is in us. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus Tecum. Benedicta tui mulieribus, et benedicto fruto ventre tui Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre, Amen. Ece ancilla Domini. Fiat mi secundum verbum tu. Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus Tecum, benedicta tui mulieribus, et benedicto fruto ventre tui Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre, Amen. E bevo un caro facto mest. Ave Maria, grazia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tui mulieribus, et benedicto frutto venti tui Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre, Amen. Ora pro nobis, Santa Dei Genitris. Ut digni e fecciamo, promissioni dus Christi. 
Grazie a tu, anche questo modo, mille mente bus nostri si infonde. Ucchi angeli nunzianti che sti figli tuoi incarnazioni con Iovim, per passione meglio se il cruce, a resurrezione e gloria per educamos. Per Cristo un domino nostro. Amen. Gloria a Patria, e Figlio e Spirito di Santo. Sicutera in principio e non che sempre, ed in secolo a secolo orum. Amen. Gloria a Patria, e Figlio e Spirito di Santo. Sicutera in principio e non che sempre, ed in secolo a secolo orum. Amen. Gloria a Patria, e Figlio e Spirito di Santo. Sicutera in principio e non che sempre, ed in secolo a secolo orum. Amen. Profideli vos defuntis, regime eterna dona di Domine. Luce perpetua luce a teis. Requiescant in pace. Amen. Sit nomen Domini benedictum. Ex nunc et usque in seculum. Aiutorum nostrum in nomine Domini. Vi feci celum et terra. Benedica vos, omnipotes Deus, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Amen. Cari fratelli e sorelle, Dear brothers and sisters, I would like to express again my clonus to the people in Central America hit by strong hurricanes. In particular, I recall the island of San Andres, Providencia, and Santa Catalina, as well as the Pacific coast of the north of Colombia. I pray for all the countries who are suffering because of these hurricanes. I renew my greetings to you, the pilgrims of Rome and various countries, particular to those of you very limited because of COMED who have come on the occasion of the creation of the new cardinals, which happened yesterday afternoon. We pray for the 13 new members of the College of Cardinals. And I wish all of you a blessed Sunday and a blessed journey of Advent. Let's try to to bring good even out of the time that this the COVID is that we're under. Um, to, to be aware of the need that others might have near to us and to go about our tasks and family with simplicity. These three things will help us a lot. Greater sobriety, simplicity, a respectful attentiveness to those around us who might be in need, and very importantly, a moment of some moment of prayer done in the family, a simple form of prayer. And please, don't forget to pray for me. Enjoy your meal. And Arrivederci, our Holy Father's signature closure at the end of this Angelus, which brings to an end this live broadcast of the noonday recitation of the Angelus on this first Sunday of Advent from here in St. Peter's Square. We'll be back again live on Wednesday morning, 9.30 local time. Our Holy Father's general audience happens at that time. I invite you to visit the Vatican News web portal, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube accounts for coverage of today's Angelus as well as the consistory and the mass of thanksgiving with the new cardinals, which our Holy Father mentioned during this Angelus. On behalf of Vatican Media, I'd like to thank all of the people behind the scenes, especially the technicians who've made this broadcast possible, and to all of you for joining us today. A most blessed Advent journey to all of you. Laudetur Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ. St. Therese's prayer to the Holy Face for the liberation from the coronavirus. O Jesus, who in thy cruel passion didst become the reproach of men and the man of sorrows, I worship thy divine face. 
Once it shone with the beauty and sweetness of the divinity, but now for my sake it has become as the face of a leper. Yet in that disfigured countenance I recognize thy infinite love, and I am consumed with the desire of making thee loved by all mankind. The tears that flowed so abundantly from thy eyes are to me as precious pearls.